In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon everyone, and on behalf of the Crown family and the Salations of Don Bosco, and I'd like to welcome as we farewell our brother and friend, Father Jerry Crown. And also on behalf of his rector, Father John Pepwood, who came down from Sydney this morning, and for all of us here, and also some friends of Father Crown, it's good to have you all here today to thank God for all Father Crown has done for us in our life and in our service. So firstly, and I'd like to invite our deacon from Samoa, Deacon Etty, to come and sprinkle the holy water upon the casket of Father, Father Crown, who was once baptized as a Catholic, so Father, uh, Brother Etty. We bless the, the body of Father Jared with holy water that recalls our baptism. All of us who were baptized with Christ Jesus share with him in his death and sh shall be united with him in his resurrection. And also, and I'd like to invite Father Peter Carroll to light the Easter candle. The reminds of our life in Christ. Jesus promised us whoever follow him will not walk in darkness, shall always walk in the light of Christ. Thank you. For the blessing of the poor, and I'd like to invite Father Tony Musta. Father Tony is the fellow novice of Father Cran. So Father Tony, would you like to put the priestly stole on Father Cran's coffin? Thank you. Last but not the least, Father Crown was a Salation for over 70 years. So I invite Brother Stan Rosato to put the Salation Constitution on his coffin as well. So brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, you chose Father Jared to serve, serve your people as a priest and as a teacher and leader and to share the joys and burdens of their lives. Accept him now into your safe keeping, lead him to everlasting happiness, where there will be no sorrow, no weeping, nor pain, but the fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord of God will wipe away the tears from all faces. 
the reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, <coughs> Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Having been justified by his blood, he will be saved from God's anchor through him. Hope will not leave us disappointed, because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. At the appointed time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for us godless men. It is rare that anyone should lay down his life for just men, though it is barely possible that for a good man, someone may have the courage to die. It is precisely in this that God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now that we have been justified by his blood, it is all the more certain that we shall be saved by, his, by, his, by God from his wrath. For if when we were God's enemy, we were reconciled to him by the death of his Son, it is all the more certain that we have been reconciled and saved through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let the Lord be on your lips and your heart and your mouth today. You may only proclaim the most holy gospel. Amen. Amen.
For God, For God so loved, loved the world, world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you, and then I shall come back to take you with me, that where I am you also may be. You know the, the way that leads where I go. Lord, said Thomas, we do not know where you are going, how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. When uh, I informed the provincial that uh, I would be at the funeral, uh, he asked me, could I do the homily? Because we have, uh, Jared and I have known each other for such a long time, since 1963, 65, uh, 1953, yes. And, uh, well, it was a long time, but uh, I think most of you have uh, seen him more than I have, because sort of we overlap sometimes. Uh, and the, the rural premises of our aspirant state in the Netherlands, where Jared and I first met in September 1953, there was a plot of land which uh, we came to know as um, the second wood or the second copse, sort of a, a tract of trees uh, with majestic oaks and uh, beeches. I don't know whether it was called the second plot, but uh, it must be a first one or a third one, I don't know. We had a walking track around it, and um, it was dissected by uh, another narrower path which led to the uh, Silesian Cemetery. And uh, it was strictly out of bounds for us, mere students, the only people that were allowed, we were only allowed there at, uh, on All Souls Day to get the indulgences and on anniversaries of the Silesians. Um, it was teeming with birds and squirrels, and our mission procurator was a bit of an ornithologist. And um, if you're in his good books, he would take you into that plot of land, and he would point us out all the different various kinds of birds, hundreds of them. And they were flitting and flying around the trees, and scratching and scrounging on the, on the ground, looking for food. And uh, it could be a very noisy place, not because of the boys, but because of the birds and the squirrels. But when evening came, it became quiet. And their wanderings and scrounging around had um, ceased, and they began to fly to, f to their roosts. They began to fly towards something definite, towards home. And I'm sure that uh, Jared, like uh, myself, were particularly fascinated by a, a real noisy bird, that species of small crow. And when that just approached, they would head for the church spire or for uh, a copse of uh, oak trees and a lot of circling and raucous cawing and squawking that would settle down for the night. Day was done. They were home. 
And they're not like un unlike human beings. We also need a home. But where is home? It is a question that many migrants and uh, missionaries ask themselves, and I'm sure that Jared himself asked him several times, where is home? Is it the Netherlands? Is it Australia? Is it Samoa? He lived, in, uh, lived and served in many places. Born in the Netherlands, as Holland is now officially known, he left the strict and um, multi-children family home where love was expressed not so much in affection but rather in food on the table and clothing for the kids, schooling. There were hard times just after the war. And he began secondary schooling at the Salesian Minor Seminary or Aspirantate, which was a friendly place in the direction of some very Italianate Salesians. After the student, after the Aspirantate, the Studentate, with even more Italian educated Salesians. The Mosco di Cera Così, the Mosco Faceva Così, and that was our Salesian formation. We picked the spirit up by osmosis. And his practical training was back in the aspiring state where he became the general assistant. And I was one of his uh, suffering uh, miners, a student. He organized everything and he ruled with a, a heavy disciplinary hand. Sometimes uh, not very rational, but we accepted it. We laughed it off. Because on the whole, the place was a happy place, also for him. Then he studied theology in, in Sherwood and Melchett Court in England and was ordained a priest in 1958 by uh, the bishop in uh, Romney, <coughs> Romsey. Uh, and during the holidays, his various theology, like, like, just like the students that were in Italy, like Father Tony, and Father Wenting and Father Remy, and they all came back to the Netherlands for their holidays and visited the aspiring state. So Jared and I met up many, many times and discussed our, our, our future, especially with Tony, so that he was already then pushing me to come to Australia. Anyway, there's a story at that time that the Salesians in South Africa were thinking of starting on a visit, and a certain Father de Burg came to the province to find candidates. And three students, including myself, uh, applied to go there. And, and Jared was also interested to go there as a, a senior Salesian. And the two applied as a trainee teachers. I stupidly applied as a <coughs> seminarian and Jared as priest. And needless to say, Jared and I were unacceptable in the political climate of the day and we had to look for other pastures. And it became Australia for Jared, and me a few years later. Uh, Jared always vehemently denied this story, as he also denies kicking my foot off the clutch of the car uh, during a driving session uh, on Wheelers Hill. <coughs> when I came to Australia in 1962, Jared was sent to Essendon Airport to pick me up and look after me. After all, he knew me personally. Well, he walked straight past me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the only person there, except Jared, of course, too, in, uh, in black clothes and a back-to-front color. But we eventually found each other, and he kindly looked after me for the next six weeks with great dedication. He made sure that I listened to the English for migrants lessons on the ABC and made sure I felt at home. And that was in Oakley. But later he moved and made his home in several communities and apostolates. Oakley, Listerfield, Chadston, Sunbury, Brooklyn Park, Catherine, Catechist, <coughs> Prefect, Bursa, Parish Assistant, Parish Priest. He supported the Dutch Gregorian Choir. He majored in Latin at the uni. He taught professionally. 
The Lord's voice choir was his pride and joy, and each place was a home. And then Samoa called, and this time it was I who welcomed him, and he was to be parish priest in Silamonga and Moamoa, something he did with great enthusiasm and empathy, because some time before, uh, a kind of miracle had happened during a sabbatical at Hawkston Hall. He, he came back different. He had mellowed somehow. He was more approachable, more able to share his feelings. He was more patient and more attentive. Not the same by all means, but he was trying hard. And he was much admired by his parishioners in Samoa, not in the least because he made great efforts to learn the language and showed great interest in the culture. Where was Jared's home, he could ask. Home is the place where we feel loved and welcomed and accepted. It's not so much a place as a relationship of love and trust. To have a home is not just to have a place to live in, it is to have a set of close ties with people who accept us for what we are and who give us a feeling of belonging. For Jared, home was not so much a place, but loving relationships, even though he found it difficult sometimes to express the depth of these relationships. He built a beautiful new church in Moa Moa and an office, parish office in Sinamonga. But in spite of all the buildings we put up and the roots we put down, here on earth we do not have a lasting place. All we have, as St. Paul tells us, is a kind of tent. And at death, this tent is folded up. The last few years, four or five years, I was in Engadine and uh, I had the opportunity to visit Jared many times, once a week until COVID came. And then it was only, well, after six months, then it was only very, still very restricted. But I could see the difference before and after COVID. I could see that he was going down. His memory was gone. I used to come in sometimes and he looked at me and he said, I know who you are, what is your name? And, uh, well, that was very, I could see that he was going down. And I knew that uh, coming to Gawler, where I am now, meant that uh, I probably wouldn't see him alive again, because he went down very quickly. It is not on earth that we need a home. We also need a home to go to when death brings down the curtain on the days of our life. But at such a home, a life would be a journey to nowhere. At the Last Supper, as we heard in today's Gospel, Jesus knew that the night of death was coming on. He had no doubts about where his life was leading. He said, I'm going to the Father. Jesus saw his death as going home, going to the Father. He wanted to go to the Father's house, knowing that there too he would be loved and accepted as he was. And all of us can make our world a better place by the love we give and by the love we receive. Jared did this with some difficulty, but he was dearly loved and he loved with heart and soul. Not always able to express it, but he did. Our permanent home is with God, who loves and embraces us forever. To die is but to find him, to meet him, and to see him. And we pray that Gerard may rest in the love and the peace of the Father's house, and let us console ourselves with the sure hope that one day we will all be reunited 
with him and all our fellow Salesians that have come before us in God's house. Let's stand on for the prayers of the faithful. <clears throat> As God's people, family, confrere, relatives, and friends of Father Jared, we have come together to celebrate the life of a dedicated <coughs> legend. Let us unite our prayers to those of all the saints as we entrust him to the Lord. The spirit of Don Bosco captured the heart of Jared and took him on his life's journey. May Don Bosco and all the Salesian saints now gather to welcome him to his eternal reward. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father Jared was model, uh, has modelled deep commitment and unstinting generosity in living out his Salesian vocation. May he now enjoy the peace and fulfilment of his life's quest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father Jared lived his life as a faithful witness to the Gospel and the Salesian constitutions in his various appointments and achievements in the province. May we all be inspired by his exemplary Christian and Salesian life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. In addition, Yes, Father Jerry has personally endured the restrictions and challenges that illness and retirement have placed upon him. Now that journey has been completed, may he experience the freedom promised to faithful disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During the years of his ministry and subsequent like illness in the Australian province, Pacific province, yeah, right back many have supported and thoughtfully cared for Father Jared. May they all be rewarded and comforted for their goodness and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this time of sorrow, we remember Father Jared's family. May those who are deceased now enjoy his company, and may those remaining be comforted in knowing that he has been entrusted to the Lord, and that as we do so, we remember them and join with them in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you reward your faithful servants, call from this life and console those who mourn. Hear our prayers in the name of your risen Son, who now lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Jesus Christ, 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 Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Father Jared, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully minister here, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make the holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Claim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an everlasting gift to you, 
so that we might obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint John Bosco, and with all the saints on whom constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <coughs> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the families you have gathered here before you. In your mercy, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Gerard, Gerard whom you have called before, from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son to, in a death like his may also be one with him in the resurrection, when from the earth he will rise up and uh, up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the, the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes and seeing you as God, seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> At the Saviour's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Son, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the same peace. Do you want to get a ciborium from the tabernacle? Nice.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. 
God of mercy, we who receive the sacraments of salvation, pray for Father Jared, your servant and priest. You made him a minister of your mysteries on earth. May he rejoice in the full knowledge of your truth in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Father Peter Wang is going to lead us in the final commendation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Jared, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Jared again and enjoy his friendship. Let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, come to his help, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God most high. May Christ, who called you, Jared, take you to himself. My angel lead you to the presence of God. Receive his soul and present him to God most high. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God most high. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Jared to you, uh, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. <coughs> Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. Amen. Amen. And now, in peace, let us take leave of our brother Jared.
Well, the proper order now have been accomplished. Let us, uh, being in this sacred place, uh, acknowledge the uh, final resting place for Father Jared Cran. And we ask the Lord's blessing on this uh, particular resting place for him. O oh God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless this grave and send your holy angel to watch over it as we bury here the body of Gerrit Cran. Welcome him into your presence, that he may rejoice with you and your saints forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful, merciful Saviour, we commend Father Gerard Cran. Acknowledge, we, we humbly beseech you, a person of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Let us now turn to the Lord, our God, in the hope of consolation that we shall use the everlasting glory of Christ. For Jared, that he may now enjoy the place prepared for him in, the, in great love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Jared's parents and his relatives, that they may know for the love and support in their grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Gerard's friends, those that have been able to join us here, and for the many circles of friends who, are, who have acknowledged his passing, that they may love one another as you have loved us, we pray, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of people who gather around Gerard in various missions that he, in which he has served, both here in Samo and in Samoa particularly, we pray for them and for their continuation of that mission. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for those who mourn this wonderful priest, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all in need, for Garrett was very concerned for anyone in need, that the, that the fearful may find peace, that the weary may find rest, and the oppressed may find freedom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us all join together in prayer, the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. For we make this prayer in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and, let the and a perpetual light shine upon him, 
May the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you and us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulceno, et Spens Nostra Salve. A te clamamus, exulus filiae, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, Illos tuos misericordes aculos ad nos converti. Et Iesum benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, O As we have now entrusted Jared to the Lord and leave him here uh, to, in, to rest in peace, let us go to follow and continue his mission uh, to love one another and to take care particularly of the needy as Jared would like us to do. So let us go now in peace. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to join us in the mansion where there will be some uh, brief refreshments and we can share some of the stories that uh, we recall about the, uh, the legendary life of Jared Cran in those years that he was here at Sunbury, the legend of the Saturday barbecue. But let us go now in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Shepherd, and I want to follow wherever.